The Italian peninsula is seen as the epitome of old world civilization for many around the globe. Although many would argue that Rome, as well as Greece, was the heart of the Western world for many hundreds of years, with countless different cultures all around the world streaming from this region since the classical period, the origins of these societies is not really well known to many, even those who belong to said nations. So, in order to unveil the roots of Italian, and by extension all Latin, and perhaps even all of Western civilization, we are to look no further than the origin of these different archaic tribes of one of the most important regions in classical human history. As I discussed in an earlier video, the old pre-Indo-Europeans, as in the European nations and cultures that existed before the expansion of the Amnaya from the Eurasian Pontic Steppe, aren't really too well known or understood due to the fact that written language didn't exist in any of these societies before the spread of the Phoenician alphabet. There are inferences over the cultures and customs of many of these people, but it's unknown what ethno-linguistic groups they belong to, with a couple exceptions, notably the Basques and other pre-Latin Iberians, as well as the Etruscan Ration or Tyrrhenian family of northern Italy and the Alps. Who are these groups related to exactly? We have literally no idea, but it is known for sure that they were pre-Indo-European, and hence many conflicts arose when the modern Indo-European cultures entered the peninsula. Most of these belong to a branch of the Indo-European family that you'd probably recognize, known as Italic, a name which possibly has its roots in the Greek term for southern Italy, which was well known by them for quite some time, which we'll get to later. However, it's been proposed that the Italic peoples derived from Germanic, or more likely Celtic, many thousands of years ago in Central Europe, which is why the term Italo-Celtic is sometimes used to describe this hypothetical proto-family, which is certainly a plausible hypothesis considering there was an apparent expansion of both these families from the Central European Alps region. There were actually many Italic tribes that inhabited the peninsula and beyond that most are not aware of, with the tribes of Sicily, the Oscans of southern Italy, the Umbrians of central Italy, the Picentines of the Adriatic coast, and the Venetian tribes of the north, all known to be related, in addition, of course, to the Latin and closely related Faliscan tribes. Keep in mind, however, that due to the peninsula's central position jutting out into one of the most active bodies of water in the entire world in terms of human activity, there were also many incursions by outsiders, including the Messapians, a likely Illyrian-descended nation in the region of Apulia, the southeasternmost region of the peninsula, also known as the Heel of the Boot of Italy. Who were the Illyrians exactly? Well, perhaps I'll get into it in a later video, but they were an ethno-linguistically affiliated collection of Indo-Europeans in the Balkans, with no political ties whatsoever, who were possibly related to the Greeks, and it has been suggested that they eventually evolved into the nation of Albania, although outside of Albania itself, this proposal is quite controversial. Southern Italy was also heavily impacted by the Greeks, with there being a multitude of Greek colonies in Calabria and Sicily, which is why, even to this day, Southern Italy has a huge cultural and genetic affiliation with Greece, and there are even small pockets of Greek speakers, known as the Gricko, who have survived in this region. Another people group that found their way to the peninsula would be the Phoenicians, who would later evolve into the Carthaginians, an Afro-Asiatic bunch related to the Israelites, Assyrians, and other northern Semites, and as many know, this led to the conflict of the Punic Wars starting in the 3rd century BC. However, even before this, the Latins, or Romans, had miraculously grown from a small principality to one of the dominant powers in southern Italy, having conquered the bulk of the other Italic peoples, and the expansions of both the Romans and Carthaginians, who by this point in time had already conquered the bulk of North Africa and Iberia, brought them into conflict with one another. Following the success of the Romans and the Punic Wars, the nation very rapidly expanded, conquering the Etruscans to the north and claiming the former territory of the Carthaginians, enslaving nearly the entire city, and imposing their Latin culture throughout the western Mediterranean, very often borrowing and incorporating cultural and linguistic aspects from the many nations they had conquered, and eventually full Roman citizenship was granted to all Italic peoples, with the Italian peninsula remaining the most influential and wealthy region of the empire for many centuries. 
However, following the repeated invasions, internal conflicts, and degradation, the empire would of course split, with the western half retaining the bulk of their Latin culture, even after being subjugated by Germanic peoples such as the Goths, Gepids, Normans, and Burgundians, with vulgar Latin, which is just the Latin language spoken by the common folk, quickly diverging into the many Romance or Latin-based languages we see in Europe today. However, don't be mistaken into thinking that the Italians simply emerged after this tumultuous period as a unified and modern nation, as the region of Italy was perhaps more politically, culturally, and linguistically divided than any other in Europe for quite some time. There were many different nation-states that developed in Italy independent of the later Byzantine and Holy Roman Empires, a couple of which didn't really gain too much prominence, yet remained independent throughout the years. You'd recognize them as San Marino and the Vatican City. However, some of the more influential are Tuscany in central Italy, Sicily, Naples in southern Italy, Genoa, and perhaps the most well-known being the Republic of Venice, a rather small but extremely influential nation in northern Italy. The Venetians held non-contiguous territory in many parts of Europe, including the bulk of the Adriatic coast of the Balkans, the Peloponnese Peninsula in Greece, Rhodes, Cyprus, Crete, even as far as southern Crimea, and were well known as being some of the most efficient traders, merchants, middlemen, and sailors of the Mediterranean since the early medieval period, and many Italians even settled in other parts of Europe in the Ottoman Empire, with Constantinople, later Istanbul, known to have a moderate Latin population up until the 20th century. Marco Polo from Venice, Christopher Columbus from Genoa, Amerigo Vespucci from Florence, and countless other explorers hailed from various parts of Italy, yet still they remained heavily divided, with nearly a dozen or so independent nations in the Italian peninsula by the 19th century, with the main powers being the Kingdom of Lombardy Venetia, which was actually under the control of Austria, the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies, the Kingdom of Sardinia, and the Papal States controlled directly by Rome, but gradually over the course of over half a century, the squabbling nations would consolidate under the Kingdom of Sardinia, later rebranded as the Kingdom of Italy after the annexation of the Papal States. Keep in mind that the island of Corsica is also heavily associated with Italy due to the fact that the Corsican language is most closely related to the dialects spoken in Tuscany, and Corsican people are much more closely related ethnically to Italians rather than the French. However, the French just so happened to gain control over the island, and it's been in their possession ever since. Italy has also been heavily influenced later on by the neighboring peoples of the Western Balkans, Iberia, other Europeans, and outsiders. And fun fact, tomatoes didn't actually exist in the Old World until the Spanish brought them from the Americas in the 1500s. So before this, Italian cuisine would have looked very, very different. Now, even after unification, it is rather spurious to point to a unified Italian nation as the different regions all have extremely different cultures, customs, and dialects, and in the case of the Friulians, Sardinians, and Latins, their languages are not mutually intelligible with the Italian dialect continuum, with there being many differences even within the so-called Italian language, very similar to Arabic, Chinese, German, or Hindi, although in recent years the Italian language has become much more standard with regional dialects quickly falling out of favor. Additionally, in the canton of Ticino in Switzerland, a region of nearly a third of a million people, the dominant language is still the Lombard dialect of Italian, although whether the Italian-speaking Swiss citizen should be considered ethnically Italian or not is up to interpretation, with the other major languages of Switzerland being German and French, giving them a rather interesting national identity. In the past couple centuries, a massive number of ethnic Italians have settled in and influenced other European countries, especially France. While the small island nation of Malta is essentially an Arabized Latin nation, as the Maltese are nearly identical to the neighboring Sicilians, with the major difference being that the Maltese retain the corrupted Arabic dialect from North Africa following their conquest by the Moors, while the Sicilians did not. And since then, Malta has had a very, very large cultural connection with Italy, with around half of the Maltese vocabulary actually originating from Italian, even though it is still classified as an Afroasiatic language. Even though Italians never had any colonies in the New World per se, they still had one of the largest cultural footprints in this corner of the globe, with Italian immigrants to Latin America stretching back to the 16th century in most areas, but it really wasn't until the early to mid-1800s that Italian immigration really took off to the Americas, 
quickly outnumbering nearly all other immigrants to this region. And outside of the United States, there is also a large Italian descended population in Mexico, Venezuela, Peru, but especially the Southern Cone, which includes the southern states of Brazil, Uruguay, Paraguay, and most of Argentina, with the dialects of Spanish spoken there having a strong Italian pull. Worldwide, there are somewhere in the range of 90 million full-blooded ethnic Italians and Italian descendants, already making them one of the largest European ethnic groups in the world. However, when including those with a significant amount of Italian heritage, this number swells larger than many could ever imagine, with perhaps 170 million people with full or at least some significant partial Italian ancestry across the planet. So, had these immigrants never left Italy in the past, the already very crowded Italian peninsula would have become one of the most densely populated countries in the world, but I've already done that video before. Overall, the Italians are mostly Catholic, of course, often being seen as the center of the Catholic Church worldwide, but others across the globe may be Protestant or irreligious depending on the country. The Italian nation has an incredibly interesting history of originating as a rather small and irrelevant tribe to expanding to one of the greatest empires the world has ever seen and fluctuating in and out of history ever since. So you can thank the Italians for facilitating trade across the globe, for leading the expedition to the new world, for laying much of the groundwork for much of the western world, for their modern contributions to the arts, culture, and customs of many different diverse countries, and for their food. So go and let me know your thoughts on the Italian nation, its origins, history, and impact on the rest of the world. That doesn't get nearly as much attention or acknowledgement as it should. And for today's poll, let me know which external region of Italian settlement you find to be the most interesting. And as always, this has been Mason. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.